to Sikahima back deep. Long known as one of the better ones at returning kicks. Low Miller to kick it off. High, short, and he'll have a chance at the 12. Sikahima out of the pack. Richie Kotite said yesterday, we've been close, we just haven't broken one yet. Randall Cunningham will open at quarterback. His seventh year. And he is approaching a cherished record that of rushing for quarterbacks. Daryl Smith, Shad, Alexander Floyd, Davis, and Beach up front, Smith instead of Heller. Walker and Byers, the running backs. Barnett and Williams wide. The Eagles first and ten at their own 31. No place quite like this place to watch and attend and broadcast a football game. Fires and Walker. That's Williams in motion. Cunningham for a bundle to Barnett. A.J. Johnson not fooled on defense. The Redskins will look like this. Four-man front, Stokes, Johnson, Eric Williams, and Charles Mann up front. The three linebackers, Collins and Marshall on the outside, although Marshall moves around. Govea in the middle. A.J. Johnson and Martin Mayhew, the cornerbacks. Edwards and Copeland, the two safety. Second and ten. Two tight ends set up. Beach and Johnson for the Eagles. Barnett in motion. Cunningham to Walker. Walker. Struggle for a couple. Govea stopped him. Yeah, I think we talk about Cunningham coming back this year and the confidence he has as a quarterback. And the other thing that has really helped his confidence is this guy, Herschel Walker, the Eagles uh, really just had a one dimensional offense. It was all Randall Cunningham. And then Herschel Walker came to the Eagles this year from the Vikings, and he's really added another dimension. Now the Eagles have a legitimate running game. Third down at the 34. First possession for Philadelphia. Floyd Dixon, the third wide receiver in the game, and Cunningham out of the shotgun with time and a lot of it. Pursued and finally out of the pocket, going deep. Incomplete. Good coverage by Danny Copeland. Barnett again, the intended receiver. Well, the Redskins stop him and they love that here, but interesting, the, the Eagles came out and they really went right after him because two of those passes were, were like 50 or 60 yard bombs from Cunningham. Just about as far as he could throw it. That may not be true. Yeah, but I mean, they came out there and they were going to widen that field on him, lengthen that field on him. Short kick by Fiegel. And out of bounds, the Redskins will take over in pretty good shape. Mark Rippon starts next to Jacoby on the members of the posse now. As the Redskins go with two tight ends. setback. That's Terry Orr, the man in motion, and Rippon gets it to Orr. Up the middle, first down, Redskins into Eagle territory. Thomas made the stop after a gain of 16. Rippon to Orr. Eagle defense, number one in the NFL. Simmons, Harmon, Golick, and White. Thomas, Byron Evans, and Seth Joyner playing with a bad knee. Booty starts at the cornerback spot today with Eric Allen, Hopkins, and Waters. Miner, a couple. The Eagles secondary, as the whole team did, met before the game to give themselves and each other a pep talk. Anything deep. Hey, they catch it short, come up and punish them. Let's not give up any big play. This team can't beat us if we don't give up big plays. Hey, so let's not give up big plays. The game, the game is won right here. Make sure we all on the same page. Communicate. Anticipate the movement, all right? Anticipate. And we take him out from deep passes, and we got everything under control. Thank you about your assignment before it happens. And now Biner moves to his left, stopped by Hopkins after a gain of six. 
You know that Eagle secondary that was Andre Waters uh, talking first to strong safety and then Wes Hopkins a weak safety and of course what they were talking about is last week they were beaten by Kansas City because they gave them those big plays off of play passes and confusion. So what they're saying now is the Redskins if they don't play past them if they don't fight and and you know and not anticipate that they can't beat them if they don't give them a big play. The Redskins need two for a first down. Sanders, Clark, and Monk, all three in the game. This is Sanders in motion. New six. Ribbon gets to Biner. First down, Redskins. Andy Harmon made the stop. Hey, that was a heck of a play by Andy Harmon. I have no idea where he came in from, but that looked like it was going to be a big play. Andy Harmon is a defensive tackle there, and he just knifes through and makes that play. As it starts here, it's going to start off to the right. It's that counter tray where both guard and tackle pull. And watch Harmon right there come slicing in and make that tackle. That was very close to not being a first down. I can see why you said, where did he come from? Because he just appeared. <laughs> he was nowhere. This is Biner again, right side for a couple. The other thing that Joe Gibbs wants to do, Pat, is have balance. He always talks about, you know, balance between run and pass. And he has it. that guy right next to him on his left is Don Brovitt. And they remind him, you know, how many times he's run and how many times he's passed. Because sometimes as a play caller, Joe Gibbs is one of the few head coaches at call plays. You get in a, in a rut, you keep calling. You, know, you start calling passes, you forget to get back to the run. So he has those players, Don Bro, some of the players and Don Bro, sort of do a scouting report on him. Finally. Looks like about a yard and a half shy of another first down. Yeah, this is the thing that impresses me is that the offensive line of the Redskins is really handling the defense of the of the Eagles. I mean, they're blocking them, they're knocking them off the line, they're staying with their blocks. And they're getting pretty good running room. Joe Jacoby, an outstanding block on Seth Joyner. Biner again. Redskin first down. Close to the 20. Clyde Simmons tripped him up. Six rushing plays in a row for Washington. You know, the other thing, the the Redskins are starting off here with a real fast pace, Pat. They're going right now, they're going no huddle. And their whole thing, I think, is to start to keep that Eagle defense off balance. Biner, rushing play number seven, close to the 15. Again, wrapped up by Simmons. Red Cashin, by the way, is the referee. Just outside the 15. Again, the Redskins going with no huddle. They want to get up there, look and see what the defense is presenting them, not giving them a a chance to really rest and huddle up and then hit him quicker. Minor again. Stop just across the 15 by Golick. You see, you just watch the offensive linemen here, and, and they're really doing a good job on this front group. You see him firing out. They're getting movement. They're trapping. They're making things happen. They're, they're, they're controlling on this drive. They're controlling the line of scrimmage. Again, no huddle. Third and three. Seth Joyner was not in position. He was looking back. The pass to Monk complete. It'll be first and goal at the six. Nine-yard gain. Hey, I think of, of, of Gary Clark, he's going to get the big plays, but who is the guy who's been doing them for so many years? Art Monk just always seems to be open. Again, no huddle. I know that this is something that the Eagles couldn't have expected, and it does look like it's, that it has caught him off balance. They do look like particularly on that pass play they were not quite ready you could see people walking around and some motioning however there is motion for the snap full start number 66 this time the against offense. the Redskins five yards still first down hey here's the here's the play before that 
You see, here's how they're going to block Reggie White. And we talked about this in the pregame. There's Ed Simmons on him. But you see, 87, that's Ron Middleton. So they're not going to single Reggie White. When they're going to pass, there's going to be two big bodies on him. Complete to Clark. The extra point team, I didn't see anybody signal touchdown, but they're coming on to kick the extra point, so no more need be said. And that's a touchdown. That's a guy that when we talked to the Eagles last night, that was a guy that they, they were worried about, Gary Clark. And the other thing, Reggie White says, we got to stop them on their first drive. They said they always have big drives against us, and the guy that's always a part of that first big drive is Gary Clark. Low Miller for the extra point. Rutledge holding, hits the upright. Bounce through, it's good. A good bounce for Chip Low Miller. 7-0 Redskin. RFK Stadium. The offensive line meeting with their coach, Jim Hannafin. Chip Low Miller in the meantime set to kick off or just about ready to kick off. Other side of the field with the secondary. Wes Hopkins, something wrong with his left leg. Being worked on at the moment. 11 plays, 61 yards. They kept the ball six minutes, three seconds. The Redskins lead it 7 0. Sikahima at the two. At the 24. So the Eagles trailing by a touchdown will take over at their own 24. Yeah, watching the touchdown again, Pat. Here's Gary Clark. Watch his moves. He comes up, he goes in, he stops and delays. Here's John Booty trying to cover him. Well, watch the move that he put. He comes in like he's like, then he goes in hard, then boom, he stops and makes that pivot out. There's no way John Booty is close to that one. The Eagles go with two tight ends and give the ball to Walker. Walker got three, stopped by Tim Johnson. Now that was a heck of a drive by the Redskins. Though. The, the Eagles didn't want to get beat by the easy one or the, the big one, and they didn't. They, they, they were just beaten by a good, methodical Washington Redskin drive. With a lot of it, no huddle. I think that's the thing that threw them off. I think that the Eagles were ready to play one pace on defense, and the Redskins didn't let them play that pace. Second down. Cunningham to Caballo. Wilbur Marshall made the hit round. Let's send you back to New York. Well. Chicago. Brad Muster gets the Bears on the board first with a one-yard touchdown run, and with the extra point, the Bears lead it 7-0 in the first. Pat? Well, I lied. We did interrupt the fight. But it wasn't serious. Unless you're involved. That was Charles Mann, you know, and that started on the first series because someone cut Charles Mann's knees and he's been uh, he's been after that someone ever since and it's Anton Davis. Floyd Dixon was the intended receiver and Anton Davis held Charles Mann on that play. Yeah, that's going to be a good battle all year. Yeah, if you watch your previous play, this is the the one that the that happened before you see Anton Davis grabs Charles Mann there and then at the end he slaps him with his right hand that's what started the fight now here's the last play see he starts in there and he grabs him right there here's Fiegel's punt and this is a honey Brian Mitchell for the Redskins Out to about the 35 where Washington will take over stopped by Heath Sherman Washington leading 7 nothing 52 yard punt 16 yard return.
Jeff Snyder right here. He's a five foot six rookie. You talk about a guy that, that is, is a marked guy, and he's the guy that's being double teamed. There's Copeland on him now. Copeland knocks him down. He jumps on him when he's down. A leg whips him. Snyder gets back. He gets he gets a takedown there, and then Copeland gives him a pat on the head. Uh, uh, well, <laughs> after that, Copeland said, "Nice play. <laughs> yeah, that's good playing for a five foot six guy." And then he left the area very quickly. Redskins first down. That would be a rule in the NFL that you don't double five foot six guys. <laughs> That's Viner out to about the 40. Stopped by Golick, a flag on the play. Talking about marked guys, though, on football, those guys, you know, on the punt coverage, there's only two of them on each side that can go when the ball snaps. They can leave early and they go and they always get doubled. And they get knocked out of bounds and they get knocked down and jumped upon and leg whipped and uh, everything. Before the snap, 85. False start on the offense, five yards, still first down. Donnie Warren started early. Well, that will tell you something that the Redskins intended to do or try to do. Keep a balance, as John said. And be able to run the ball. Yeah, and the Eagles only give up about 60 a game on average, and the Redskins uh, in this first quarter already have half of that. And these are the kind of games that Joe Gibbs loves. I'll guarantee you, I know about the quarterback, I know about the posse and the passing, but he loves to run the football. Ripping the time gets it to Monk, who's open and wide open. And he doesn't run out of bounds. So he gets all he can. Otis Smith made the stop, a pickup of 34. I think the Eagles sent out the invitations last week against the Kansas City Chiefs that the way to beat the Eagles is with play pass. You run at them, then you fake the run. One, it gives you time. It keeps those pass rushers off you. Two, it brings the safeties and linebackers up, and it gives your receivers a lot of room to work, and that's just what Art Monk does. Look how long it takes a guy to get in the picture. Well, you know, they say all this movement that the Redskins do like now doesn't bother them. They've seen it so much, but they wound up with Byron Evans covering up. This is Byron. Almost. And that's not supposed to be, you know. Uh, the, the other thing that Joe Gibbs likes to do is bring all his guys in close. He said, because the thing with the Eagles is they have two hard-hitting safeties. You know, when you talk about Wes Hopkins and Andre Waters, and he thinks that by bringing everyone in close, then you can run play pass and crossing patterns. That really gets them out of the game. If you spread them out, then you let them hit those inside holes and hit those runs. They're a lot tougher to play against. Donnie Warren sets up again on the right. Middleton comes to the left. Griffin goes back and throw. Monk again. You wonder how long he's going to be able to hold up. He shows no signs, none whatsoever, of slowing down or losing any durability or any toughness or anything like that. Well, you know, he's one of those guys that uh, takes every snap in practice, uh, never takes a day off, works out year wrong, uh, has great cardiovascular endurance, and uh, may just, you know, break in every record and may just play forever. He might set one of those records that'll never be broken. What a great guy. Rippon rolls left. A little bit of pressure. Still complete. And still to Monk. Flag on the play. Monk's down inside the 15. Or down to about the 15. Penalty marker down. A gain of 12. Hey, you, Mark Rippon got rid of that one. And there is a penalty on that play. But... They were lucky because I think they had to follow up their pass protection on Reggie White. Watch Reggie White here. Simmons blocks down, doesn't block him, lets him come, and the back has to pick him up. And I know that they don't intend to block that way, but they are not going to say that Ernest Biner is going to block Reggie Smith. Holy Reggie White. Number 30 on the defense. That penalty is declined. First down. Holding against Otis Smith. On Ricky Sanders, that's declined. First down, Redskin. Joe Gibbs is calling an excellent game. You see him looking at the plays there, and again, he's already called this first down play. He's he's starting to look at second down plays, 
He's starting starting to look at inside the 20 plays. He's starting to look at goal line plays. Always thinking ahead. About the 14, tripped up by Golick. There's Bud Carson, the defensive coordinator for Philadelphia. Richie Kotite, the head coach. Of course, he's done a heck of a job since he's taken over here with with Buddy Ryan and putting this team together and picking up a Herschel, getting a running game going, keeping his defense together after the loss of Jerome Brown. Ripping for Clark out of the end zone. Well covered that time by John Booty. That was one of the plays that Joe Gibbs was looking at. You know, uh, 20 yard line pass and inside the 20. He had run earlier. He had run Gary Clark on that uh, pivot, that delay out type of thing. That time he tried to get him on a corner. There is an amazing man, number 84. As a pulled hamstring, as a pulled groin, did not practice a play all week. And will come in and play the whole game, play his guts out, give everything he has. Well, Joe Gibbs was saying yesterday he worries me, Clark, because he can't practice. He didn't all week, as you said. The Eagles again were looking backwards. Incomplete. As Clark again juggled. Well, Rippon started out six for six, then he had a couple incompletes there in a row. But if he would have had that one, that's a touchdown. Watch Clark here. He makes a move, just sits right there in the goal line, and he one hopped it into him. He had it. That was a touchdown. That was just a poor throw by Mark Rippon. Low Miller with Jeff Rutledge holding from 32 yards out. Eagles have nobody back. Field goal from Low Miller. Not good, and Washington's lead is still 7 0. Washington, 7 0, Redskin. Yeah, here was the third down play, Pat, and you'll just see Gary Clark was open. Mark Rippon just throws a duck. Look, he just steps there. Clark is right there. That ball's wobbling and bouncing in there. That was just a bad throw. So it's first and 10. Philadelphia on their own 20. This is Herschel Walker behind the line. Eric Williams, the first Redskin to hit him. Chip Lowmiller missed from 32 yards. Yeah, if you look at it on the clicker, I think that right here he gets too far in front of it, doesn't he? I think so. You're no kicker. Watch that left foot. You want that left foot when it hits right there to be right at the ball. Looks like the left foot was in front of the ball. That left foot step was just a little bit too long. Sometimes they'll slide and have trouble with it. And sometimes it uh, gets a little lengthy on them. That's Byers almost breaking it. Stop. Finally by Wilbur Marshall after a gain of five. And the Redskins just uh, activated Eric Williams today and he's kind of anxious to get back. He's just coming off now. He played on first and second down but Bobby Wilson who normally starts there has been starting had back spasms during the week in practice then had back spasms again today. So Eric Williams was not only activated he thought he was going to be a backup but he ended up being a starter today. Joe Gibbs said, uh, how did he hurt it? And somebody said he didn't do anything. He was just stretching. Cunningham, that was a silent count. Cunningham will continue. The pass is incomplete. Dixon, the intended receiver, Martin Mayhew with him. And I know Charles Mann is thinking, how in the heck did I miss him? Charles Mann just ran right by him, just put an arm out there. He shot an air ball on him. Against man. Now watch man. He's right here. He's going to jump and then he's going to have the tackle. See, boom, he gets a double dipper there. Now, if you're going to jump off sides, at least tackle the guy. Watch man right there. Whoa, where'd he go? He went the other way, so he did the bad. He jumped off, caused him a penalty, and then the next thing he does, he uh, he misses a tackle. That's the first eagle first down of the day. 2.13 left to play in the first quarter. 
That's the only one of the day. Well, the Eagles haven't gotten started yet. They haven't gotten their passing game uh, nor their running game going. Byers now lined up as the tight end to the right. He's there blocking for Walker. Walker hit behind the line, gets away from one. Steps over two. Charles Mann was the one that was first on the scene. I know, and Byers was blocking him. Watch Keith Blyer, Byers there. He's blocking against Man. Man handles a block well, comes off it. And again, Herschel Walker is a big, strong guy. And if you hit him up there in the shoulder pads, he's not going to go down or backwards. You have to get Herschel Walker below the waist. You can't get him up there in that area of the shoulder pad. Second and nine. Here's Cunningham to throw it. In the middle of the beach, his tight end. And that should be enough for a first down. Kurt Cobea made the stop. I'm sure when they started their season, they didn't think that Pat Beach was going to be their tight end. Of course, they lost Keith Jackson. He became a free agent. He's now with the Miami Dolphins. Pat Beach is a guy who made a living as a snapper, a punt snapper. In fact, he's been in the league for 10 years. He was waived by the Jets. And then the Eagles picked him up. And he is their punt snapper. Then when Jackson doesn't come, he's their starting tight end. And all of a sudden, they're talking about what a good receiver he is and what an excellent blocker he is. And but somewhere along the line this year, they're going to miss Chief Jackson. Here's Cunningham. Pass caught by Calvin Williams, who pays the price. A.J. Johnson made the hit. Let's again send you back to New York for an update. All right, Pat, in Chicago, the Bears on the board again. Jim Harbaugh to Brad Muster from one yard out. Harbaugh's second touchdown of the day. And early in the second quarter, the Bears have now built themselves a 14-0 lead on Tampa Bay. Pat? Here at RFK, 7-0. The Eagles for the first time today in Redskin territory. 24 seconds left in the first quarter. I bet that wasn't an audible hardboard just called. I bet wasn't. Behind the line, Walker by Marshall. There's a guy who had a heck of a game Monday night. In fact, Richie Whoa. Pettibone said the other day that Wilbur Marshall played the best he has as a Redskin Monday night. That's the end of the first quarter with the score. Washington 7, Philadelphia nothing. John Madden at RFK in Washington, and there is the posse. Yeah, one thing, you know, that happens a lot in football where you get a group and they and they play together, then they sit down together. And you know, like the offensive line, they'll all be together. Usually how they play, the posse, they all sit together, the defensive linemen, secondary. He fires in motion, Cunningham with a blitz coming, Marshall. The first there, nobody to pick him up. Nothing Cunningham could do, a loss of 12. Cunningham says that he always wants to know where Wilbur Marshall is, too. And again, Wilbur Marshall, he's playing like he used to in Pittsburgh. I mean, in, in, what am I talking about, in Chicago. <laughs> but you just watch him, he comes from the outside there in the right of the screen, no one blocks him. But if you don't block Wilbur Marshall, he's going to have big games all the time. He, kn he knows where he is now. There's Dave Butts. Boy, nobody clogged up the middle of that Redskin defense like he did. Yeah, you talk about uh, staying at home and being the policeman in that middle when Dave Butts played left defensive tackle for the Washington Redskins. There was no running in that middle. It was it was almost a mistake to call him left defensive tackle because the whole middle was his. That's right. Remember he had that big old helmet he used Before to wear. Before the snap, false start, number 61 on the offense, five yards and still third down. Hey, you just watch the the right guard is the guy that they call it on. He hasn't moved yet. I don't, I don't know that that's right. That looked like it was defense to me. Third and 29. A 
again, Cunningham under pressure and out of the pocket and out of bounds. Yeah, Randall Cunningham was saying last night that, that Richie Kotite told him a couple weeks ago, he said, hey, look, just be yourself. If you see a hole, take it any time you want to. And he said that that really gave him confidence. And I think before this game is over, Randall Cunningham is going to have to do a lot more running. Well, he's certainly capable. Mitchell and Desmond Howard back deep for the Redskins. Fiegel's a punter. Brian Mitchell signals fair catch at about the 10. And that's where they'll mark it, and the Redskins will take over 90 yards away from the Eagle goal line. 7 0 they lead. By Cutter. Washington has 122 yards, Philadelphia 41, ripping six out of eight for 86 yards, a touchdown to Clark. Cunningham is 19 yards away from the rushing record for quarterbacks. That's held by Fran Tarkenton. Yeah, and if you look at that last shot that he took in the sideline, you have to believe that he has confidence. Look at his left knee. His left knee was the one that he had the surgery on. He wears the brace there, and that shot was right on his left knee. And you have to take some of those before you get the confidence back. Ricky Irvins has replaced Miner as the lone setback for Washington. They might have taken too much time. Delay by the offense. Five yards, still first down. Yeah, one thing the Redskins have to think about or worry about is the fact that they only have a seven to nothing lead, that everything has gone their way. And the Eagles haven't done anything yet, but they only have seven points. I mean, they should have had 14 points because Gary Clark was open in the end zone. They missed it. Then they missed the field goal. And that is going to come back. I mean, that's going to come back. They're going to have to think about that later in the game. It always does, it seems. Ripping. Andre Waters up in a hurry. You know, he's doing a pretty good job as Big Ed Simmons, a right tackle there against Reggie White. They, you know, they he had some help with the tight end. They've done some no huddle as they're doing now. But he's kept Reggie pretty much under control so far. Second and 13 and Rippin has got his receiving core in. He's back in the end zone as Rippin. That's Gary Clark wide open, short of the first down by about a couple. William Thomas. Yeah, again, coverage. it was a play pass. And if you watch here, this is how they're blocking Reggie White. There's Ed Simmons. We talked about this. You keep Donnie Warren, the tight end in there. Don't let him get anything on that right side. Give Mark Rippon time to throw the ball. There's the yard. Up in a hurry to stop Ricky Irvins is Andre Water in the backfield, in fact. That's the thing. That would have been the time to go play pass. You see, that's what you want to do. Here's here's Waters right here. He's going to hit that thing. Now, if you would have gone play pass, then you really would have gotten him. Because watch him. He's up there. He's darn near like a linebacker. Boom. He's going to hit that hole. He sees run. He hits it right now. Takes a look. Had you would fake that thing, boy, you could have run a crossing pattern in there against him. Kelly Goodburn back to punt, standing at about his own two. Sakahima. Good burns kick <laughs> adequate. Sukahima down to about the Redskin 44 yard line. It'll be first and 10 there for Philadelphia. 7 0 Washington lead. Redskin 7, Eagles nothing. But the Eagles have the ball in Redskin territory. First and 10. 12.03 left in the second quarter, about the 43 and a half yard line. Cunningham to throw it. Incomplete. Intended for beat off his hand. Cunningham's only completed two passes, and I think really to, to get this passing game going. He's going to have to start getting the ball to his outside receivers, especially Fred Barnett, because Fred Barnett is one of the, the big play guys in this league. 
Of course, when you're getting bounced around and knocked down like that, when you throw it, it's easy to sit up here and say, ah, you ought to throw it to Barnett. And then you, yep, you're looking at your ear hole. Second and ten. That's been showing blitz. Flag on the play. Straight ahead is Byers for good yardage. Johnson tripped him up. I think Charles Mann jumped off sides again. He's really having trouble. I think instead of watching the ball or movement, I think Mann is listening to Cunningham's count and he's pulling him off because that's the second time that he's jumped off sides. Watch him. Here's Charles Mann right here. Now, now you can see Cunningham. He gives a little movement there, and then man jumps. And again, he's not watching the ball. He's listening or hearing, or the little, you know, they give that that hard count, that you know, and and get that thing. And the guy, you know, you get down there, you're ready to go. You jump. You're going to jump on anything. Man jumped. They had that penalty. Fires a gain seven yards, but they took the penalty, so it's still second down. Second and five. Cunningham looking quickly. Fred Barnett. Did you see Govea come? Yes. I mean, he, he was like he was shot out of a gun. A.J. Johnson is on Fred Barnett. And he's going to bring him down and make the tackle. And I'll tell you, receivers in this league are really paying for it after they catch a ball. Watch him get up here and watch 54 come in here now. Boom! Holy moly. That'll give you a headache. Barnett checked to see what number that was that went over my head. He checked to see if he had all his parts left after that. He's playing against A.J. Johnson, a little defensive back, and the next thing he knows, a middle linebacker is hitting him. On first down, Barnett again. Well, we said that, that Cunningham has to start getting the ball to Fred Barnett, and that's exactly what he's doing. Fred Barnett's one of the big play guys in this league. You see, he's averaging 18.1, uh, you know, per catch. He has uh, four touchdowns already, and and you know, I was talking to Richie Pettibone about him, and he said, you know, he's as good as there is in this league. He, he doesn't get all the credit yet. But when you talk about the top receivers in this league, Fred Barnett is going to be in that group. He does from the other players. This is Byers again. Stopped by Andre Collins. Byers and Wilbur Marshall now tangled. The fight there, Daryl Smith was, was in there. He's starting for Ron Heller. Ron Heller was the normal left defensive or left uh, tackle. And they, he hurt his arts the other day. And a lot of stuff happens in a pile. You know what, Pat? Oh, I mean, yeah. Just stuff like this, a whistle blows, and a guy wants to get one more pull or one more jerk or one more kick or something. You see that quarterbacks stuff. in there like that. Look who's in there. <laughs> Cunningham was pulling them off. Most of that stuff that happens in there is not friendly. You well, we don't find quarterbacks in there no. pulling guys too often. Here's Cunningham out of the pocket and tripped up. Fumble. Ball was loose, but he might have been down. What he was doing is he was reaching to try and get that first down. He was just short. He went down and he tried to reach the ball out. Fred Barnett does that a lot too. At the end of the play, they, as they go down, they try and reach the ball out. Watch him now. He knows it's third down and he's looking where he has to get. See him try and reach the ball out there. And as the ball hits the ground, it comes out of his hand. But that wasn't enough for a first down anyway. Because it's where the ball is where your knee goes down. They don't give you that extra reach anyway. So it brings on Roger Ruzik. There's the lunge that you were talking about. And the ball bounced out. A 39-yard attempt coming up by Ruzik with Beagles holding. Distance good. Field goal good. And the Eagles get on the board. So with 8.25 left in the second quarter, 7-3 Washington. The Redskins dominated so well, controlled things so well, but yet they lead only 7-3, and that's going to come back. Yeah, and that's that's what you always worry about. You know, when things go your way, 
and you should be putting the other team away. You know, I mean, they should be putting the Eagles away or have them halfway put away by now, and all they have is a 7-3 to three lead. 8.25 left to play in the first half. Turned out to be a delightful day in Washington. Cool, but no wind. A little bit of sunshine. Oh, this is football weather. I mean, this is Perfect. the time you ought to be playing football on grass or growing pumpkins and stuff like that. Pumpkins and football and grass, it all goes together. Oh, oh. And Mitchell tripped up at Redskin at the Eagle 40, and he was down. Tripped up by Floyd Dixon. 47-yard return. We were talking last night to Richie Cote. We were talking about offense and defense, and he said, you know, he said in these games, don't forget special teams. It seems like there's always a big special teams play. This one is a big special teams play against them. Brian Mitchell, one of the good return guys in the league. Even has a little straight arm there. The straight arm didn't work. That was a big play. First and ten at the Eagle 39. Irvin's left side. A yard perhaps. William Thomas and Clyde Simmons made the stop. Yeah, the, the Redskins are, are really using Ron Middleton a lot today. Number 87, a backup tight end. Is, we talked about him again in the pregame. A 270-pound guy. And you can see he's just like another tackle in there. And they're uh, using him to help double. They're using him to lead on plays. And between he and Donnie Warren, the Hawks are getting a lot of help and doing a good job. Very effective. Griffin's pass is deflected knocked backwards yeah by Reggie White you see what happens if you don't double Reggie White and they didn't that time they feel confident again okay we got to go we can get that tight end going they leave Ed Simmons on Reggie White alone and Reggie just goes boom and he just goes right in the backfield watch 92 there see when they don't give him any help he just gets that arm by just runs right through it puts that hand up there and I'll tell you things start to fly backwards when you when you only block Reggie White man to man. Mike Golick might have gotten a hand on that ball as well. Third and nine. Clark was the motion man again. White puts the pressure on the pass is caught by Ricky Sanders. Ball just got barely through. Wes Hopkins was close. That should be enough for a first, and it is. And I'll tell you, I would still start getting uh, some more help on Reggie White because he's getting awfully close to Rippon. Rippon had to throw that ball, and he throws a perfect ball in there between two defenders. But watch how, how quickly Reggie Post gets off the ball. I mean, that's normal speed there, and that's what he does. And you have to throw the ball with that stuff coming at you. Hard to believe he's 305 pounds and still moves like that. He worked out uh, on a new weight program in the offseason. He said he's stronger than he was. Irvin bounces over the left side for good yardage. A gain of seven stopped by Andre Waters. Reggie White went to Chicago, and he worked out with Al Vermeil. Is a strength coach for the for the Bulls, and he said Reggie thought that he needed more strength in his arms and his legs, and he said he's stronger in his arms and his legs, and he has more explosion now. And when he came back, he only has 10 percent body fat. And for a guy 305, that is amazing. Or three something. Yeah, I mean 10 percent. I mean that sounds that sounds uh, like something real real little old skinny people have. Just a little. Maybe enough for them to measure for a first down. And Maybe the, not. The guy next to Reggie White, uh, uh, Mike Golick there, he says he likes fat. He said fat's good. You can't pull fat. <laughs> he said you never heard anyone pulling fat. Those muscular guys, he said they're always pulling something. You know, Billy Martin used to tell me that about baseball players. He said, you know, when he played, he said you never heard of baseball players pulling stuff. He, he said, we didn't have any muscles to pull. <laughs> now these guys got these big old arms, and big old legs on them, and they're always pulling. And the other one they're having a lot of his back spasms this this year. 
for no reason. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, Wilson gets a back spasm and uh, thing. Ed Simmons got a back spasm, pulled his muscle getting out of his car yesterday. Chasing the dog. Yeah, I'll guarantee you, Golik doesn't get any spasms or any pulls or anything like that. You ever chased a dog? I thought it was supposed to be the other way around. Yeah, I did chase a dog. I did chase a dog because he was on the other end of the leash. And someone lit off some fireworks. <laughs> and the dog started running. I had a hold of the leash and it was uphill. <laughs> it wasn't by choice. No. Irvin's bounces outside. Ricky Irvin's inside the five. Knocked out by Eric Allen. But a 15-yard gain. Look at Bud Carson. And I tell you, there's nothing that makes a defensive coach more mad than than a, a running game going everyone starts saying you have to stop the run you have to stop the run and then when they run on you it just kills you because if you can't stop the run they're going to do everything to you all day i think this is a pretty good combination with biner coming ernest biner hit you and then bringing in a ricky Irvin. somebody's always fresh ripping into the corner intended for Middleton. He almost waited too long. Byron Evans got in front of him in the last second. I think that was Ray Brown, wasn't it? Was that Middleton or Brown? That looked like a, a guard or a tackle falling down there. That didn't look it like it was a, Ray Brown. Yeah, it is. Watch, watch. That's an old guard there. I mean, the guy throws it to you, just fall down. <laughs> There's no way that that looks like an athletic move that any kind of end would make. Now, I know Middleton is a tight end. He's using a blocker, but that is a tackle eligible. That's a tackle going out there making an effort like that, although there's no one that would have caught that anyway. Second and goal from the three, Irvin. Got to about the one. Stopped by Andy Harmon. Hey, this this makeshift line of the Redskins is doing a heck of a job today. We've mentioned how they're getting help from the tight ends, but the tight ends are just part of that line because they've been doing an excellent job of pass protection and run blocking. They have, again, with the help of the tight ends, they've controlled the line of scrimmage. Look at that. Look at that pile go back. I mean, they just took the pile, brought it back, then boom, just moved it all to the left side of your screen. Third down. Very short. At the one. Evans get in. Byron Evans led the green defense. Yep, they didn't do it on that one. I watched the green guys win it down here. See the, the Eagles get down, they, they get down low, they miss the tackles there. They get penetration there, and there's no first down. Or no touchdown or no nothing. In fact, they're going to, it brings up fourth down, and they're going to kick a field goal. But the Eagles control the line of scrimmage there. Low Miller. This time is good. And the Redskin lead is now 10-3. Oh, look. Eagles and Redskins continues. And you can't beat that. Uh, good football here. RFK Stadium on the grass. Rivalry game. Pumpkins. World Series. And the month of October got it all. Jeff Snyder bringing it out of the end zone for the Philadelphia Eagles. Broke one tackle. Fumble. The ball's loose at the end of the run. The Redskins might have it. They think they do. Yeah. The officials don't. Yeah, they're pointing the uh, Eagles' direction. Yeah, the big third down play. Here's the play to see. Here's Brett Hager here, right here. And Hager just hits this thing right through here, and they don't block him. Hager was the guy that made that play that forced him to kick that field goal down there. Hager makes a three-point play right there. With a pretty strong assist from Andy Harmon. And there was the play right there. You see the officials ruled that he was down. And the official pointed his finger to the ground. So he was saying he was down before the uh, ball came out. Once he points to the ground, you can start thinking about the next play. 
Here's Cunningham to throw quickly and caught and juggled behind the back by Byers, who finally held on, covered by Andre Collins. Andre Collins was right there. In fact, he, he, he thought that he had an interception, it looked like. Here's a little half roll by Cunningham. This is a heck of a catch because that ball was tipped or something. That's going sideways, and it's tipped out there by Andre Collins. And then one concentration there by Byers. Byers just take he just took that right out of Andre Collins's hand. Now he's got it behind his back and finally gets control. Three yard gain after all that. I think it was hit by three or four guys. That's Byers again. Near first down yardage. Govea and Copeland stopped him. Yeah, you look at, at Seth Joyner, and you know, we know that the Eagles lost Jerome Brown in the offseason, and they always you know want him to be a part of them. And, and as Seth Joyner says that you know he's he's a part of us and he was a guy that brought enthusiasm to us in any game that we ever go into. Jerome Brown is always with us. In fact, if you look at that patch on the left shoulder of all the players, you can see it right there where it says JB. Seth Joyner was saying last night that you know that he just can't believe that he's not here anymore. And whenever he's in a game and he feels that he needs strength, he just rubs that patch and feels that Jerome Brown is still there. Uh, he was Jerome's best friend. And that sort of just fuels him up. Cunningham outside the Barnett. Or Calvin Williams this time, beg your pardon. Martin Mayhew up to make the stop. One thing about Cunningham, when he wants to get rid of that ball quickly, he can get rid of it as quickly as anyone. He, he reminds me a lot of Joe Montana when we're just come boom and he sees it, and whap, that thing comes flying out of there. Two minutes left to play in the first half. The Redskins on top 10 to 3 at RFK Stadium. New Orleans, you'll get the Saints and the Cardinals. We're at RFK Stadium in Washington. Second and four, Philadelphia. Redskins leading 10 to 3. Two minutes left to play in the first half. Cunningham. Side to Bayer. Hit by Marshall. Something has happened to Wilbur Martin. He's back with the old intensity you said that, that he seemed to have with the Bears. Well, I think that one thing they did is they started to, to let him blitz a little more. I think that he got more involved in the game. When he first came over from Chicago, uh, he didn't even play on third downs. And then they started letting him play on third downs. And then they started blitzing him more. And, Instead of playing the old Redskin defense, they're playing a little for Wilbur Marshall. Pass from Cunningham to Williams complete. That should be enough to move the chains again for the Eagles. The Eagles are going without a huddle now, too. Calvin Williams did a nice job of catching that ball and coming back because there were two Redskin defenders right there. About a foot short of a first down, second, and just a little bit. Cunningham going for a bunch. Intended for Barnett. I tell you, you know, that doesn't look like much here, but there, if Fred Barnett is one of the few guys in the NFL that can do what he just did, he can run through double coverage. There can be double coverage, and you, he can still beat it. And the other thing that he can do is he can run through a zone. Everyone says you can't throw deep against a zone. If there's a safety sitting in the middle, you can't throw deep. Normally, you can't. But Fred Barnett can run through and pass. Him. There aren't many guys that can do that. I had one that years ago. Cliff Branch could do it. Roy Green, remember Roy oh, Green? Sure. He could do it, and Fred Barnett can do it. Jerry Rice could do it. We've seen him do it. And Joe Montana was quarterback. Cunningham again going deep this time for Williams. Flag on the play. See now Williams can't do it. That's the thing. I think. I think if, if if you have Barnett out there, I think you can throw it into double coverage. I think you can throw it through a zone. I think to Calvin Williams, you have to. I think this is this is going against the Eagles. 
Jumpy Gathers and Mike Shad all tangled up. I think the call was, was against uh, whoever was blocking Daryl Smith, who was blocking blocking Wilbur Marshall. Well, it's Shad there. It's Shad and Gathers are still going. I mean, the play is over. <laughs> you always tell the guy, you know, keep blocking until the whistle blows. But then when the whistle blows, you got to stop. But I think they they didn't stop that time, so that is against the Eagles. Well, you know, sometimes you you get hooked up like that, like yep. Mike Shad. There, you're going against jumpy gather. You don't hear from whistles or anything. No. You don't know anything. You just I think you're trying to stay square at him and stay with your man and do whatever you can to protect your quarterback. You just have to bring a bucket of cold water. <laughs> yeah, for Cunningham again, flushing him out of the pocket. Collins was chasing him. Pass is picked off by Alboard Mays. Mays. Inside Eagle territory where the Redskins will take over. A minute and seven seconds left to play in the first half. Big play by Andre Collins. You know, the Redskins know that when you flush Cunningham out, he always wants to flush to the right. So you always want to run someone out there when you flush him. Andre Collins ran out to the right when Cunningham was flushed and hit him just as he was throwing that ball. And that's why Al Boyd Mays got the interception. But that's a word on Cunningham, the scouting report is that he is always going to run out to his right. When he gets in trouble, he's going to go out to his right. So you know that, so you get someone running out there with him. Watch, there goes Cunningham out to the right. There goes 55, Andre Collins with him. Collins hit him just as he threw it. So Rippon going to work now. Back to throw. Down he goes. Nobody blocked. Seth Joyner. And Byron Evans. And the thing is, and I think they left one on one on Reggie White again. Sometimes you 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 get a little confidence, you get going, and you forgot what brought you there. They, they did have control. In fact, that was the first sack there, Pat. That was the first sack the Eagles have had this quarter, this game, this half. Thus far. <laughs> Rippin taking his time. Gets off to Finer and it looks as if the Redskins will just be content to run things out and head for the locker room. I don't know that they should do that. I think that they, you know, Joe Gibbs after that sack, he wanted to calm the rush down, but I think they have such good field position here that they ought to be taking a shot at something. Well, he had it and a little momentum going before that sack, and that sack sort of let the air out of things. It's Simmons this time the first one to arrive. Andy Harmon also on the scene along with Reggie White. I think that the Redskins did get confidence. They got confidence in their pass protection. And then it was kind of like Clyde uh, Simmons and Reggie White were asleep and they just woke up in this last series here because they started to put the pressure on Ripon that you kind of expected would happen when you came into this game. Five seconds left. Timeout. Philadelphia. They want at least a chance to return this punt. Well, they went almost the whole first half without having a sack, and then they got a couple right there at the end. Now I think a smart thing with the Eagles here uh, would go for the block, but you may as well go for the thing because even if you even if you rough the kicker, they don't have enough time or field position. And I would think that this would be a all out punt block. That would figure even though they do have one of the best punt returners around in Sikahima. You think of all the opportunities the Redskins had they were on the goal line three times and they had that interception there and they only have ten points. They haven't done much with a lot. They're coming after. Them. Good kick by good burn. Sikahima let it bounce. Dead at about the one. So that'll take care of the first half at RFK Stadium. As the gun sounds, 66 yard punt by Kelly Goodburn. 
got a field goal. Then they got the interception right at the end of the first half. Now you kind of feel like the Eagles, uh, uh, again, have been sparring that first half. Uh, haven't haven't gotten anything going yet. They, you know, they haven't established any kind of run with Herschel Walker. Uh, Randall Cunningham really hasn't gotten into a passing or passing and, and running rhythm yet. And you kind of feel that that he's gained from that first half where the Eagles have and they're going to take some advantage of it this second half. They will kick off to Washington first. This will be Desmond Howard. Picked up loss of football. There's a scramble. A 17 yard return by Desmond Howard. I'll tell you one thing about Desmond Howard. He ran that thing up in there. I mean a lot of times rookies will run sideways a little. I mean he just took that thing and he just finds a hole and he just runs right up in there. And again the ground can't uh, cause the fumble. You see the ball bounce out when he hit the ground. But that's impressive the way he took that thing and phew, he just brought it right up in there. Hey what else there was an impressive block in front of him by Kurt Govea. He really leveled someone. Ripping on first down. Looks right, throws. Looks left, throws right. Clark, the receiver, short yardage, four. Yeah, if we look at Mark Rippon's passing, we see that, you know, that the, the biggest part of it was in this area here, you know, the 10 to 20 and under 10. But, you know, he had thrown 19 and 12 passes over 20 yards. But today they don't seem to you know, be going deep. They seem to be working that shorter stuff all the time. That's Ernest Biner, short yardage. Well, you look and you see that he's three, he's four out of six here under 10 yards, four out of six, 10 to 20 yards, but he hasn't thrown any passes over 20 yards. So, you know, part of that is, is a plan. A big part of it is a plan. And, of course, part of it is that pass rush, uh, either real or anticipated, from the Eagles. As you said when we were talking yesterday, sometimes you can scout a team in the newspapers or with the press the previous week. I think that's what happened to Kansas City and the Eagles. They talked about run, 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 and then they just play pass. Outside to Monk. Ripping hits. Knocked out by Otis Smith. That was funny. We, we talked about Reggie White had 113 sacks coming into this game, more than anyone in the history of since they've been keeping uh, uh, sack stats of any defensive lineman. Of course, Lawrence Taylor has more, but he's a linebacker, and he's never sacked Mark Rippon. One of the least mobile of the quarterbacks. Yeah, and he said he just gets rid of the ball so quick. And the other thing is, He's always doubled. I mean, he always has that big Don Warren over there, uh, you know, where he has to fight through two guys. Ripping back to throw it again. This time, it goes deep and it hits Clark. Gary Clark out of bounds inside the Eagle 30. Knocked out by Wes Hopkins. That's a good throw by Ripping. And that's good pass protection. I mean, here, Ed Simmons, we were talking about on Reggie White. He took a man-to-man. -man. They doubled in the middle. They had a hold here. They gave Ripping time. And then, of course, given Ripping time, gave Gary Clark time to come all the way across the field. Now, watch Ed Simmons. He's singled up here. See number 76? He's blocking Reggie White. He gets that left hand up there and stops him. Then he gets a push and gets some turn. That is great pass protection. Good footwork to go with it. This is Finer over the right side, inside the 25. Stopped by Golick after a gain of three. You know, until, the, uh, until right at the end of the half, Rippon really didn't have a lot of pressure in that first half. He was sacked twice, but remember, both of those were at the end of the half, hurried three times. He's been knocked down twice and had one batted ball. And when you play the Eagle defense, that's not bad pressure for the quarterback, really. Second down and seven. Speaks well, very well for this makeshift, if that's the correct word, offensive line. Griffin, great pass. He had a lot of time. This time he's throwing for Ricky Sanders. Incomplete. 
slipped out of his hand. Uh, again, under a little bit of pressure, not great pressure. He had a lot of time, in fact. Well, he threw it. This is a second duck he threw. Remember the one he had Gary Clark open, and he threw to the left. He threw a duck. Here he threw another duck there. Because he should have been able to throw that one. Watch it here. I mean, he's looking. He's throwing back there. What's that thing? That looks like a knuckleball. That's a, a trap. You know, you go out in October and you think of pumpkins and trap shoots. You usually you usually shoot stuff like that. Tommy Jeter. Part of the Eagle front four now, number 98. Coach Knight had said that he had planned to give him more action, a flag on the play. And from the applause by Clark, you'd think it's against against Philadelphia. And it's right down there where the ball was thrown, so it's either going to be pass interference of some sort. And as you say, when Gary Clark cheers, it's going to be pass interference against the Eagles. You know, the other side has been doing a good job, too. I mean, we talk about uh, uh, Mo playing over there at left tackle against Clyde Simmons. Clyde Simmons, we haven't heard his name much. No. Eleanor Weeby starting his first game. Joe Gibbs finally gave up. He just calls him Mo now. Yeah, he said that, uh, you know, he thought he was going to cut him. He said uh, he tried to figure out Elowanibi, and then he figured, well, I don't have to think about that anymore. And lo and behold, he uh, came back. Now there's another flag. Another flag on Eric Allen. <laughs> Seth Joyner saying why. And Waters better watch it or there could be a third flag yet. These are the things you find in rival games, but you got to keep your cool. I'm a big one to talk about. That's <laughs> interference. Number 21 on the defense. Allen. He enforced at the spot of the foul. Un Sportsmanlike conduct. Number 21, half the distance of the goal. First down. The old double dipper. Yeah, they got the double on him. The, the first one, here's Eric Allen right here. And the, the first one you're going to see will be pass interference. And that's down the field right there. You see him right there. After the five yards, he hit him. And that's what he's arguing with. He's saying that, that, that he really didn't pass interfere. He didn't pass interfere. The thing was illegal hit. He hit him after he went five yards. Then he argued about it, but that shouldn't have been pass interference. And then he threw his helmet down. That was the second penalty, the unsportsman part of it. Now the, you know, the bad thing about it is he was right. That wasn't pass interference. First and goal, Redskin. This is final. To the five. Maybe he got a yard. Andre Waters up to stop Ernest Biner. It was Wes Hopkins and Andre Waters. When you get down in here, that's like having instead of having three linebackers. That's like having five linebackers because those guys are going to be right up there in the run. And I still think that the Eagles are susceptible to play pass, and you can't forget about play pass down in this area. Watch him. Watch Waters here, number 20. I think you could still fake, get him to take that fight and then get a crossing pattern in here in the goal line on him. Second and goal. Ball's at the five. Griffin looking. Ball got it out of his hands. Picked off by Byron Evans. Chased by Byron Evans. Lateral. And knocked out of bounds finally by Donnie Warren. Eric Allen. Now, Eric, the lateral. Eric Allen could say he's right. He says, okay, that's what he's saying right there. He said, I gave him the penalty, I gave him another penalty, and then we got the ball back, so that shows that we were right. But again, Rippon throws another duck here. I mean, he may have gotten hit there, but he's been throwing some wobbly passes. Evans gets the ball. Now watch, you really have to have hands to do something like this. He switched to his right, from his right to his left, then he sees something and he just passes a lateral out there like one of those option plays. But when it's on the sideline like that, that's a safe one. This is fires and fires, bangs for a first down. Danny Copeland finally stopped fires after a gain of 16. Yeah, we talked about how that's going to haunt the Redskins, and it is. You think of the number of times they've been down there on the goal line, and they only have 10 points. 
Eagle first and 10 at the Redskin just inside the 37. 10 28 left to play in the third quarter. Washington leading 10 3. Walker's the deep back. And Herschel gets the carry this time, and he is stopped after perhaps a yard. Tim Johnson filled the hole. That's the key to stopping Herschel Walker is not let him get started. If you let him get square and get started, uh, uh, he can give you some real problems. The thing is, you want to keep him going sideways, and you want to get penetration and not let him get started. Walker, six carries for only five yards. It's been Byers when the Eagles have been able to run it. Here's Cunningham. Alvin Williams makes the catch. And another Philadelphia first down, a gain of 12, stopped by Brad Edwards. Hey, and Martin Mayhew, number 35, watch him come in here. He's going for the interception. He flies right by it, tries to get his left hand in there to knock it down, and misses the ball and the guy, and Brad Edwards has to make the tackle. They are when you, yeah, they, they, they talk about putting mustard on a football when when Cunningham wants to put the mustard on it. It has mustard on it. He can't cut it loose. Got huge hands. The handoff again is to Byers and Byers rumble into the secondary a fumble and the Redskins have it. I think that's Tim Johnson who got that ball. He left earlier with a bruised ankle. What he was doing down there, I have no idea. He must have really been blocked to get back there. Watch him. He's a tackle in the middle. Either that or he starts to pursue because this ball comes flying out of here, goes backwards, and boom, right into Tim Johnson. Danny Copeland's helmet caused the fumble. And he's right here. He's the guy that ends up with the fumble recovery. He does get blocked. You see, he gets a double team. He starts back, and he's just going to kind of get blocked and fall into this. Copeland makes the hit. The ball comes up in the air, and Tim Johnson gets a recovery. But I'll tell you, watch this hit by Danny Copeland here. He puts his helmet right on the football, right, boom, right there. That knocks it out right into Tim Johnson's hands. First and ten, Redskin. This is to Irvin. He is replaced by Nick. And there's not much there. Tommy Jeter in to make the stop. Yeah, neither one of these teams have really taken advantage of opportunities. You, you know, you can say that offensively. I think that's what offensive coaches say. And defensive coaches have to say, hey, we've come up with big plays to stop them when we had to. But they both look a little on the sluggish side, particularly when they have the ball. I think that happens in big games a lot in rivals. I think sometimes you over prepare. I think you you worry too much about the other team, and I think you you, you tend to become awfully conservative. On the draw play outside the 15 to the 17. Wes Hopkins on the stop for another update on the NFL situation. Back to New York again. All right, Pat, at Soldier Field in Chicago, the Bears come up with a big play. Jim Harbaugh looks for and finds Anthony Morgan. Watch the mix-up on defensive backs, and that clears the way for Morgan to complete an 83-yard touchdown in the third quarter. 21-7 Bears, Pat. Here in Washington, it's 10-3 Redskins. Monk shifts out wide to the right behind Clark now he comes to the other side third down here's Ripon going for Ricky Sanders and got him Sanders down the sideline to the 34 yard line of Philadelphia before he's knocked out by Wes Hopkins I'll tell you he really had pressure on him that time watch this watch watch Evans number 56 he's coming free on the blitz he's right up there so Ripon couldn't step and follow through. He just threw that one up. There's no one there to block Byron Evans. He goes up, ripping, somehow gets it by, beyond, through, or over Evans, and right into Ricky Sanders' hand. That's the thing. That's the thing you can do against the Eagles. When they blitz, you can either get sacked or you can get a big play against them. A gain of 51 yards, ripping to Sanders. This is Irvin, chased by White, and stopped after a gain of a yard. 
Travis Smith made the stop. Again, I think this this Redskin offense is, has really done a good job of, of blocking. I mean, they went, you know, they they lost Jim Lachey, they lost Jeff Bostic, they got Jacoby there playing left guard. They got a, a new guy playing left tackle that's playing against Clyde Simmons. I think they're doing a great job. Ripping a Clark. That looks as if it's enough for a first down. A gain of 10, they say. Waters and Booty. You know, if I had to start a team, I think I'd take this guy right here with me. He'd be on my... Yeah, just give me a couple of guys. I mean, I, you know, yep, if I had a bandwagon or a big old bus, I'd take Clark. You know, Joe Montana, if he was still healthy, Lawrence Taylor. Yep. I'd take Reggie White. Right now, I might say, give me on offense, give me Gary Clark and Dan Marino and nine other guys. Yeah, well, I'd take, I'd, I'd like uh, Reggie White. I'd take him and I'd take Ronnie Lott. Yeah. You know, about six or seven's all you need, then you fill in the bus with other guys, but. That guy there can can dominate a game. The the Redskins, I think, are doing an outstanding job of not letting him dominate a game. I think by play passing, by you know using a tight end to help him, by you know changing up plays, and of course by Ed Simmons doing a pretty good job of blocking too. Well, you got Reggie White on defense. I might take Wilbur Marshall that just as a start. Win. I tell you, the other guy that I like is that Derek Thomas from Kansas City. Oh. Z quick. Third and short. Irvin's has enough. Clyde Simmons on the bottom of the pile with Byron Evans, but that's the Redskin first down. Yeah, Mo Elowinibi had really has done done a good job over there. I mean, you know, on Clyde Simmons, and again, the guy he was just activated last week. Uh, for the first time in the, you know in his NFL career and now he's starting and he has to play against an all pro I day he has held his own there I know he's had help but he's held his own he said he only wanted two things I hope the announcer is getting my name right and I hope my mom is watching yeah, last week his mom is from Canada she was watching the game and it was a one hour delay so he called her and she was still watching the game and she thought that he called her from the field. She said, I'm watching. You're playing. She said, no, it's over. She said, no, it's not over. I'm watching it. How can you be calling when <laughs> you're playing? But anyway, when you play and you win and, and, you're, and, and you're happy, that stuff all, uh, all works out. His, his, mother's, his mother's probably watching the second quarter right now. <laughs> they haven't talked about my son yet. There is Urban's. Inside the 10 to about the 7, finally stopped by Waters. A gain of 12. And you know this kind of movement. Running the football makes Joe Gibbs delighted. Well, they, they start off with a great double team up there. Schlereff, the, the right guard, Ed Simmons, the right tackle. They got movement there. They took the guy back five yards. That created a hole that anyone could have run through. And you know, when you get in that secondary, you are going to have a collision with a safety and, and that safety was waters jacoby came over and just smothered the other side i have never seen anyone carried off like that well it was his knee pad as he as he hit ricky Irvin's at the end of the play his his knee got caught up under him and twisted backwards again on first down inside the five you can say what you want to about Andre Waters but he is one top hard-hitting guy let's watch his play again you'll see he's going to come in and really make a hit here now if you just watch you see right there his knee gets twisted back you see the knee right there that's where it gets twisted back as he falls over Ricky Irvin that gives you an idea too how strong Ricky Irvin is he gets the carry again. Nothing there. But Seth Joyner made the stop. But that play before that was a great double team by Mark, Mark Schlereth and Ed Simmons. And then, as you said, Joe Jacoby came through and made the trap. And that really cleaned out a hole for Ricky Irvin. Unless 
The only guy left was Andre Waters. Unless you've been up next to Joe Jacoby, you don't realize how big he is. He is huge. Yeah, and when you talk about, I mean, guys that are big and strong, and as Jerry Ball said, the scary thing is he can do something with it. You got a tough guy. Griffin throws it out of the end zone on third down. And here comes Low Miller again and again. The Redskins get close, but no touchdown. Well, again, they can they can make the plays and they can make big plays, but they can't make plays consistently. And again, you're not going to keep Reggie White out, and you're not going to keep him off your quarterback all day. Reggie White caused that incompletion. 21-yard attempt by Chip Low Miller, who's one out of two today. Good. And the Redskins increase their lead to 10 points, 13 to 3. No final word on what the injury is. It's his left ankle, it would appear, left leg, certainly. But until we get the x ray results, that's about as much as we can say. I like say Andre, Andre Waters has been one of those guys that's been called a dirty player and a tough player. And I think if he plays for you, he's a tough player. If he plays against you, he's a dirty player. But Snyder. he is a hard hitter. Snyder on the return, a flag on the return as well. Chip Lowmiller involved in the tackle. The flag remains at about the 20 yard line and it went down early. So it must be on the return. I think so over the years we see so many of those blocking from behind illegal. Block, illegal. Number 23 doing the return. 10 yards first down. Heath Sherman. So the Eagles will take over just inside their own 10 yard line trailing by 10 points. Yes it's 60 minutes you can't be president and not sit down with Larry King you can't be Larry King and not sit down with with Mike Wallace. That's tonight on 60 minutes and tonight also join us on CBS game two of the World Series. Atlanta won the first game on that dramatic home run by Damon Berryhill. A draw play and Byers has the ball. The A.J. Johnson finally got Keith Byers out of bounds, but he got 23 yards on that run. I, I tell you, that was some fake there. Eric Williams, he comes in here. He's going to come and chase Cunningham all the way. He comes and makes the handoff back here, but he really sold that that was going to be a pass. On any draw play, you want to sell it's a pass. He stopped, he pumped and faked, and then put the ball down. Eric Williams and knocked Cunningham down. But that's a different draw play. You go back and you pump fake, and then you hand the draw instead of just handling the draw. Flag is down. The defense moved, but they can. Somebody on the offense pulled them. False start. Number 83. Pat Beach. Of course, he's a tight end. He can move if he's set long enough. That's what Randall Cunningham was saying. He said, hey, the rule said that a tight end can move. Before the snap, number 83, false start, five yards, still first down. And a tight end can move laterally. He can go in motion, and he can shift, but he can't move forward. That's the key. It brings up first and 15. Just under two minutes left to play in the third quarter. Cunningham back to throw it. Chased out of the pocket. Does get it out of the pocket. That was a lateral. Well, they can pick that up. The Redskins can pick that up. He threw it backwards. They may not say so, but that was backwards. I know it, and I, I remember a big game, the Oakland Raiders against the Jets, where we threw a lateral. The Jets picked it up and put him in the Super Bowl. And it was that kind of pass. Because if this is a lateral, if he throws this ball backwards, then 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 it's like a fumble, and it can be recovered. He starts out there, and he throws it now, 
I don't know. That'd be tough to call. That'd be tough to call, but it looked like it was backward. Looked more that way live than it did as we replayed it. Fred Barnett made the reception stop by A.J. Johnson. You know, remember when Daryl Green uh, uh, played for the Redskins before he broke his arm and was out for the season? He used to always take the best receiver, and he, wherever he would go, he would cover him. And now A.J. Johnson is doing that. The Redskins figure that, that Fred Barnett is their best receiver. So A.J. Johnson is going to go wherever Fred Barnett goes. A.J. Johnson is playing with a compound fracture of his finger. And now there's movement again before the snap. <laughs> that made Red Cash and laugh. <laughs> what the heck could make a referee laugh? Before the snap. Well, a lot of things. Start. Number 78 on the offense, five yards, still third down. Oh, come on, Red, that ain't funny. We saw him last night at the hotel, Red, and he laughed when the elevator came down, so. <laughs> Yeah, but if you're if you're Antone Davis, it's not funny. If you're an Eagle fan, it's not funny. Or you're Eagle coach, you're Antone's mother, it's not funny. I don't like to be laughed at when they move. On third down, Cunningham back to throw. Going deep. Almost caught by Calvin Williams. He had it momentarily. And then it popped loose. And the Eagles will have to punt. That's Brad. the second time he threw to Calvin Williams when Calvin Williams was double teamed. But Calvin Williams beats a double team. And if you watch it here, it looked like he had it for a second. In fact, he did have it, and the ball popped out as he was going down. That's about as close to a reception as you can have an incomplete pass. Jeff Fiegel back to punt. And this is a good one. Mitchell. He's got a couple of blocks still on his feet. And now he's got some room. He's got to beat Fiegel. Finally taken down by Otis Smith, who gained a lot of ground in a hurry. 47 yard punt, 32 yard return, and the Redskins one more time have the ball in good shape, nearing the end of the third quarter. He becomes the last guy. He's the safety. So here's Jeff Fiegel. So what do you do? You take on a block, put your hands out, take on your block, turn around, put an arm up, grab for a ball, do anything you can. And that is not a bad play by a punter. Just watch it again. The position, not bad. The spin, not bad. Getting the arm in there, not bad. Saving a touchdown, not bad. How do you teach that? <laughs> I think that's just fighting for your life. It's either that or complete embarrassment. That's Ernest Biner ahead for six. Yeah, if you look, the, the Redskins have really had the opportunities. They've been inside the 20-yard line five times. They've only come up with 13 points. Now, the Eagles really haven't gotten down there. They've only been inside the 20-yard line one time. And, of course, they've gotten three points, and that's the game. Inside that red zone that you hear so much about. Yeah, the the Redskins have gotten there and the uh, Eagles haven't been able to get there but one time. That's the end of the third quarter with the score. Washington 13, Philadelphia 3. Our coverage will continue after this message from your local station. You're watching the NFL on CBS. A stadium in Washington. Pat Summerall with John Madden. Redskins have not been very successful in the fourth quarter. 31 to 9 outscored by their opponents. On the other hand, the Eagles 44 to 10 in the fourth quarter. Well, the Eagles Second. better get going offensively because they only have 66 yards passing, and that's not going to win many NFL games. Dave Spider. Reggie White. Stop Biner. If we just watch Reggie White, he's down here in the bottom of the screen. He just fires down. He takes that gap. He beats Donnie Warren, number 85, to the gap. 
Donnie Warren was going to try and cut him off, and he couldn't, and he just beat him to the gap. The word on Andre Waters is not good. A fractured left fibula. So obviously, we won't see any more of number 20. Here's Rippin back to throw. Looking, come on. He's open inside the 20, inside the 15. Rich Miano, who replaced Waters, made the stop. Again, I think you have to give these guys credit because they they have done the, the job blocking. Let's watch that left side there. You see now he's going to have some help. He got the back out there, but they just keep their guy going to the outside in the stunt. The Eagles are moving their guys around. They're doing their stunts. They're trying everything to get to ripping. But that front line and the combination of tight ends and back have done an excellent job of pass protection all day. Both Monk and Clark are out. Sanders, a lone wide receiver. Griffin looking and throwing for Sanders, throwing for a spectator in the stand who made a pretty good catch. Now he just threw that one away because he it was just kind of a one-man pattern, and he knew that he couldn't do anything. So he just threw that ball away. Watch number 64 here, Elwin Neby. He's doing a pretty good job. You see, they get Simmons here. Now he knows he's going to have help inside. So he just rides him to the outside. McKenzie comes down and helps him and just puts Clyde Simmons right on his back. I'll tell you, you can't beat that. Second down and 10. away from one tackle got about three yards say two Wes Hopkins made up to make uh, came up to make the stop you know let's watch number 66 Joe Jacoby here the left guard right here I mean he does a job whether he's guard or tackle but when he hits you he he's so big and so strong he just knocks guys right out of their cleats you see that? I mean, Golick was standing in there, and Jacoby comes down on him, and that's the end. I mean, he just, boom, he just goes up in the air. He may be the strongest playing offensive lineman of football, Joe Jacoby. Here's Rippin rolling left. Well, Sanders again out of the end zone, and again, Low Miller will have a shot. Clyde Simmons put the heat on Rippin. Yeah, the Redskins have been able to move the ball. That's the sixth time that they've been down inside the 20. They only have 13 points. Of course, I know they you know that's a good news. The good news for Joe Gibbs is we're moving the ball. The bad news is you're not getting touchdowns. The bad news for the Eagles is they're being blocked. Their defense is being controlled, and their offense isn't moving the ball. Their offense hasn't gotten anything going all day. So Low Miller will try from 28 yards out. And he hits again. That's three out of four for Chip today. 16 to three. Redskins lead. In the past and had its share of fireworks at the final gun. This one out for Krabs and Falcons are down there. Stadium. Sikahima from the end zone. From right at the goal line to about the 24. Stopped by Brian Mitchell. Well, the Eagles have to get something going now, and I don't know that they can do anything with the run. Herschel Walker's carried the ball six times for five yards, so that's probably a, a done deal for the day. Randall Cunningham is 10 out of 19 for only 78 yards, and if they're going to get back in the game, they got to do it with the forward pass right now. Jim McMahon. Always a little something different. Always good for football. I, I think 1985 when he was the quarterback of the Bears was one of the best years in the NFL. 
Here's Cunningham. Took a look and came out. Took a slide and rolled out of bounds. Andre Collins. Randall Cunningham, you see, he wears that one glove just on his left hand. One time he had a, a bad hand there, and so he started wearing the glove, and that's why he does it. Then he has his own mouthpiece. You see, he had that black mouthpiece specially made, and he has one tooth put in it. See, there's a shot of it. See, he just had one tooth put in there, then he just puts it in like that. So he takes it off in the huddle to call the plays, but on the line of scrimmage, it's okay. <laughs> Yeah. Myers, the receiver, stopped by Mayhew, a gain of three. If you watch him, he'll take the mouthpiece out when he's in the huddle. And then when he calls a play, and then and then he'll put the mouthpiece back in. The left glove, of course, always stays on. He takes the mouthpiece out. Calls a play. Puts the mouthpiece back in. Now you're ready to go. Third and four. Again, Ron Heller not dressed today, not in uniform. That is normal position. Screen pass coming to Byers. Quick screen. Byers steps out of a couple of tackles and gets an eagle first down. Stopped by Monty Coleman. And that had to be a quick screen because Fred Stokes, number 60, wasn't blocked. And he was coming right on him. Watch number 60 right here. He's coming. He's not blocked. Excuse me. That's Wilbur Marshall's coming, not blocked. So he had to get rid of that ball. That wasn't much of a tackle effort there on uh, Keith Byers. Byers is a remarkable athlete. He can run with it. He can catch it. He can block. Here's Cunningham. Out to Walker. Complete. And again, let's send you back to New York for another NFL update with Greg Gumbel. All right, Pat, at Soldier Field in Chicago, Jim Harbaugh looking to his right, throwing and picked off by Daryl Pollard, who returned 75 yards. That helped set up the one-yard touchdown for Reggie Cobb. And early in the fourth quarter, the Bucks have cut the Bears' lead to seven. It's 21-14 Chicago, Pat. 16-3 Washington over Philadelphia here. 10-10 left to play. They're working on the left leg of Keith Byers now. Second down and 10. Heath Sherman has taken Byers' place. The blitz is on and the flag is down. So is Cunningham. Tim Johnson back for the sack. Holding against Philadelphia. Hey, Tim Johnson's made some big plays today, and this is one of them. You see him on the inside there. He's making a, he's coming on a stunt. He works to the outside. He thought he was going to be blocked, and he just left the blocker and went right inside and made a heck of a tackle on Cunningham. They were holding Wilbur Marshall. He had broken free also. Now if you look at the pressure that Randall Cunningham, he's been sacked three times today, hurried eight times, knocked down three, two batted balls, one interception. And the Redskins have done a pretty good job of keeping him controlled. You better. Third and 20 again. He has to come out of the pocket and fires deep. Incomplete and no flags this time. Fred Barnett. Covered by A.J. Johnson, and again, the Eagles send on their punting team, and the applause for the defense, defense, whatever you call it. Well, it should be for A.J. Johnson because he had Fred Barnett all over the field, and when the quarterback scrambles, you have a lot longer time to cover him, and A.J. Johnson covered him like a blanket. Eagle, high kick. He'll let it bounce. The Eagles down at about the 28, and here's a flag down on the near sideline. Came out late. Oh, Red Cash and uh, the referee, he was way back there. He didn't know there was a flag. He had to run up oh. and find out what it's all about. When the hat comes off, that's to mark someone going out of bounds. So you can see the headlines without a hat. 
That was marking someone out of bounds. And then that signal was the illegal man downfield. Hey, you Reds ready? We have illegal touching by the kicking team number 85. Went out of bounds and was the first man to touch the ball in the field of play. That penalty is declined. It'll be first down and 10. That's why the official had his hat off because when the guy went out of bounds, he marked it there. Then he came back in and touched the ball. Red's got wires hanging out. He's got whistle tape. He's got everything. This is a great place to watch a football game. You don't get closer to the action anywhere else. You don't get the feeling that you're part of the crowd anywhere else like you do here. Ricky Irvin, right side. There we see Cunningham there and Fred Barnett. And again, it's like they've never gotten into the game yet. I mean, you know, like, like you're waiting to get started. You're waiting to get a rhythm. And then you never get the rhythm. It didn't come. And I think so, so far that's happened to Randall Cunningham. Of course, you talk about a rhythm. There's a guy, Herschel Walker. He's gained like six or seven yards all day. So if there's any rhythm to get into, he hasn't gotten into it. Now, Byers, we're told, has some sort of a Charlie horse. He could be back if and when the Eagles get the ball back. Going to bring up a third down and long. Irvin's the ball carrier, stopped by Thomas. Jim McMahon in conversation with Randall Cunningham now. I would like to hear that conversation. <laughs> I'm sure that McMahon said, hey, don't worry, man. There's a lot of time left. You can throw five touchdowns in that amount of time. That's the way Jim McMahon would think. And we've seen him do it. <laughs> but whatever. Whatever he said uh, got Cunningham off the bench and up to the <laughs> sideline or just got away from McMahon. He just jumped up. <laughs> McMahon told Cunningham something. Cunningham went up and told the coach. They go dripping deep for Clark over his head. Incomplete. You know what I don't understand is how, how Gary Clark can have full hamstrings, I full groin either. muscles, not be able to practice all week and then run like that. You know, you wonder. I mean, this is an amazing guy. I mean, it, you know, he's amazing. You don't know what part he hurt. I mean, there on that play, he hurt some part, but he has all his parts hurting all the time. I mean, he goes full out. He goes diving into things. He falls on his body, his arm, his shoulder, or whatever, and he just knows one way to play, and he plays it the way it should be played all the time. I think some of it is related to the fact that he doesn't care for practice. <laughs> That's a part of it. Hunt is handled by Sakahima. We got out to about the 31 where the Eagles will take over. Guy Bingham down to make the stop. 16 to 3. The Redskins lead it. The World Series here on CBS. One of them won't look so happy after the game is over tonight. Myers is back. Cunningham is back. Cunningham is down. So is the flag. Stokes and Mann. Fourth sack by the Redskins on Randall Cunningham. Yep, and there's going to be a penalty against the Redskins. Those are the two bookends. Mann came from the left side. Stokes came from the right side. Penalty decline. And it was against number 78. It was Antone Davis who was blocking Charles Mann, who was one of the guys that made the sack. Jumpy Gathers, number 97. Yeah, he's a pass rush uh, tackle. He comes in on pass, pass down to rush from the tackle position. 6 7. Here's Cunningham. Flushed out again. He's going to take off. Chased by Wilbur Marshall and hurled out of bounds by Wilbur Marshall. Peppers are flying. That's one thing about Wilbur Marshall. You know, he's a different guy. I mean, Seth Joyner's that way, too. That These guys are one guy. You see him off the field, nicest guys in the world, quiet, last. 
and then they get on the field they get in another zone and and they just they just know how to compete and hit and go after and and play and I mean they're they're just different guys third and eight Randall Cunningham needs just six yards to break that all-time rushing record timeout Philadelphia and I'm sure that's the last thought in his mind right now with when he needs is some yards and some some scores I mean, 16 to 3 and like I said they just haven't gotten anything going today they I mean they haven't gotten in sync they haven't established a running game they haven't established a passing game they haven't established pass protection they haven't been able to pick up a third down I think they've only had one third down conversion in this game and whether they're loggy or out of sync or not very good or whatever it is something's wrong well you know you wonder they were so so impressive when they beat Dallas on that Monday night and then they lost to Kansas City and then they've been sluggish today. You, they say that they haven't been looking back and enjoying the success they had on that Monday night but maybe that's had something to do with it. And then I think this Washington Redskin team has had something to do with oh, it too sure. because they played brilliantly on both sides of the ball. Cunningham. Gets it to Fred Barnett, uh, Calvin Williams again. Sorry, Al Boyd Mays made the stop. And I tell you, Monty Coleman comes. Watch down here, number 51. He's going to come on a blitz. He's a he's a third down linebacker. He comes. No one blocks him. You see, Herschel Walker tries. He shoots an air ball, and Monty Coleman hits Cunningham just as he throws the ball. That is Antone Davis. The right tackle for the Eagles who had just started to really come into his own 325 pounds and he got hit from behind and his knee just buckled. I think it was his own man that hit him but he really took a shot. Yeah here he is right here number 78. You see he's there in pass protection against Charles Mann and I think it's when Randall Cunningham is hit there by Monty Coleman Randall Cunningham goes right into Davis. One thing about you know the the guy that should block me you watch Herschel Walker he's going to come across he should be blocking Monty Coleman here he does a terrible job I mean you know you got to get in front of him you got to make something you just can't come and misjudge a guy like that and let your quarterback get hit like that I mean, part of it, I mean you know a guy is a runner and runner but when you have an assignment you have to slow the guy up because he allowed Monty Coleman to raise way too much havoc on that play. He got his quarterback knocked down he got his tackle knocked out of the game. You got to make some contact. Yeah and that's and that's his man and Anton Davis was really doing his job he was he was locked up blocking. Charles Mann on the play and then uh, when Monty Coleman hit Cunningham he hit him right in to Antone Davis and now the Eagles took a sack and they lose their right tackle they've already lost their left tackle Ron Heller uh, injured his arch in practice on Thursday didn't even suit up. Anton Davis, 325, 64. He doesn't have a lot of skin left. No. He doesn't have a lot of jersey left. The guy on his left shoulder was Otho Davis, the trainer of the Eagles, one of the best trainers in all of football. There's the guy in the shirt right there, just patting him back. That was Ron Heller. So their two starting tackles are both in the bench, one wearing jeans and the other one limping in his football pants. They'll have to make an offensive line adjustment with Baldinger. And here again is Cunningham Chase. Does get the pass complete to Walker. By Alvoid Mays to stop. Yeah, they bring Brian Baldinger in, number 62. 
he has to start off blocking Charles Mann right away so he just puts his arm right up around his neck which isn't bad and just keeps him off the quarterback any way you can when you come in cold like that and you're not going to give up a sack you do anything you don't care if you hold here's Cunningham with time gets the ball to Myers first down I tell you, Baldinger did a job that time on man. He's going to have a little help from his back. Herschel comes and help him. But watch him. Boom. He gets here. He gets square on man. He stays there. He stops him. He holds a little. Then Herschel comes up. Whap. He hits him once. Baldinger gets in position. Charles Mann never got off the line of scrimmage. Byers leads again, and Sekahima has taken his place. Cunningham. The Fred Barnett complete another Eagle first down. A.J. Johnson on the stop. Eagles going without a huddle. That was a timing pass there. In fact, he threw that ball before Barnett ever turned around. I'm sure that Cunningham would like to see Barnett, back, uh, would like to see Byers back in the game because that's his other favorite receiver. Cunningham. To Barnett. Barnett out of bounds at about the 10. You know, he really had three favorite receivers, Barnett for the deep ones, Keith Byers and Keith Jackson for the other stuff. Jackson's playing for Miami, and Byers was off in the sideline. They're just bringing Byers in now. So Cunningham's two favorite receivers here are number 41, Keith Byers and Barnett. They're both lined up on the left side. And they go quickly with no huddle. Calvin Williams and Floyd Dixon are split wide to the right. Cunningham back to throw it. Locks it into the end zone, and he's out. Calvin Williams made the catch, but out of the end zone. Well, they had good coverage over here in the left where he had, he had Byers and Barnett. He was trying to throw over there. He looked to the left. There was nothing there, and I think that Calvin Williams was his third read, and he just kind of threw that ball away. So a chance for us now to... The clock has stopped to tell you 445 left to play in the game. Redskins leading 16 to 3. Eagles first and 10 just outside the 10. Myers and Barnett again to the left. Barnett goes in motion and Cunningham on the quarterback draw. Down to about the five. It'll bring up a third down. Stopped by Andre Collins. Of course, right now, the, the Eagles have to be thinking touchdown because if they get a, a touchdown here, that'd give them nine, so they would be within a touchdown of tying the Redskins. So they need two touchdowns. They're not thinking field goal. Cunningham deflected. Monty Coleman with a diving deflection. There's Cunningham again trying to break up another fight. That's the second time a fight broke out, and Randall Cunningham was the first guy to jump into it. Richie Kotite knows it's fourth down. He has to go for it. See here, you see the deflection right there by Monty Coleman. He's been raising some havoc with this Eagle team. So this game could be on this play. Monty Coleman, 14 years he's been around. Fourth down. Cunningham pumps, locks, incomplete, no flag. The Eagles want one, but there is none. Uh, I think that was it. The Eagles knew that they needed two touchdowns. They had to get one there. Fourth down, you can tell the Redskins feel that, that they've done it. Today's game was produced by Bob Stenner and directed by Sandy Grossman. The coordinating producer of the NFL Today is Eric Mann. The NFL Today directed by Duke Struck and the senior producer of the NFL on CBS is Ed Gorin. Yeah, this is this is pretty good pass protection here. Cunningham just can't find anyone open. Very good coverage. There's no one open. Looks like one receiver did go down there. The Eagles maybe thought that was pass interference. There's Britt Hager again. He did that on the goal line. Remember, he stopped him once, that same type of blitz. That's close to being a safety. Very near. 
This seems, uh, I'm sure, to Philadelphia fans and to Randall Cunningham, insignificant at the moment, but Randall has just broken the NFL rushing record for quarterbacks, which is held by Fran Tarkenton. You know, and that's, you know, I mean, you, you like to break records, but, you know, any, any player will tell you the important thing, and I'm sure Randall will say after the game, the important thing is winning the game, and if we don't win the game, that record doesn't mean anything, and you like to break records when you win the game, like Art Monk did last week, and at home. Those are the time to break records. Not to tarnish Tarkenton's record or the record just set by Cunningham. I guess it's a tribute to Cunningham. He did it in this his seventh year Tarkenton did it in 17 years yeah, and it's a tough thing uh, you know Randall will always want to say the right things I am grateful to my offensive line for their block and the guys that helped me but usually it's the opposite usually when the quarterback has to run he didn't have any blocking second second down that was they're trying to get the rip the ball away from ripping well, that's Britt Hager down near number 54. Remember when Buddy Ryan was coaching, he used to call him his hippie linebacker. He had a couple of big plays today. One down there, one uh, on the goal line earlier. He was more of a special teams guy. Special teams, short yardage, goal line, run stopper, one of those type of guys. Got that goofy look in his eyes. You know, he needs that, to have that with a number like that. You know that guy. Third down at about 12. Rippin again just sneaks it and covers it up. Mark Rippin learned one rule about quarterback sneaks when he, you know, quarterback sneak for a touchdown last week is you always get in behind Joe Jacoby. And he did it again there. So you know when he's going to quarterback sneak, he's going to quarterback sneak to his left when Jacoby's playing left guard. Very wise. That's all the timeouts for the Eagles. 302 left to play in the game. Well, and the Eagles are going to have to think of, you know, getting two quick scores again. They need 14 points. They need two touchdowns. So they're you know, either going to get a good return here or go for a block. Then they have to go for a touchdown. That's what they're talking about now. And then an onside kick then another touchdown. That has to be Rich Kotite's plan. Well, one thing they have going for them here, and we'll get to that in just a moment. Coming up next here on CBS, doubleheader game number two, Atlanta at San Francisco. The Giants at the Rams, those of you in New York, will see that game. And now, Goodburn cannot get back as deeply as he would normally. So perhaps the Eagles have a better chance from here to block it. Oh, the Redskins are going to take two. Goodburn just trots out of the end zone. They'll concede the two points and get the free kick from the 20. I'm surprised that they did that. You know, if you have more than a 14-point lead, I think that's a good move. But now, see, the, the Eagles needed two touchdowns to tie them. Now with that, the Eagles can beat them with two touchdowns. I'm surprised that they took the safety there. Well, the fact that they have no timeouts, the Eagles have no timeouts remaining. Perhaps that was in Joe Gibbs' mind. Yeah, I'm sure that that was. And then the fact that the punter didn't have his regular uh, distance. Uh, uh, distance back there because you need 15 yards. The fact that they had 10 men up, they were going to come on a block. But now, before that, you couldn't be beaten by two touchdowns. Right. Now you can lose the game with two touchdowns. Of course, if the Eagles could score two touchdowns that quickly, you say, well, what the heck have they been doing out here all day with just getting one field goal and a safety? Kelly Goodburn. You notice that how kickers always squeeze the ball. They, you know, the NFL, they always use brand new football. Yeah. So the, the kickers, you know, the punters and the kickoff guys are always trying to loosen them up and soften them up and not kick what they call a stiff ball except they never rub it in the right place yeah and and the only guys that ever do that are the kickers right and and they're responsible you know and then the quarterbacks want the kickers to rub it good for them and stuff like that and none of it helps no <laughs> still got to kick it oh, they're all goofy bad kick 
You didn't rub it enough. Or the right place. Out to about the 47. The Eagles have the ball in their own territory, their own 47, handled by Booty. And now there's another scuffle. I'll tell you, you know, this is really what football's all about. I mean, you know, I mean, the Redskins and the and the Eagles and division and rivalry and three or four fights breaking out and and and, and guys playing. I mean, you know, you say, well, this really you know wasn't a high scoring game or any of those things, but I mean, it looks like mash out here. I mean, guys coming in, carrying off the field. Guys have given everything they've had in this game. I mean, they've, they've let all the fuel out of their tank. And one of those fights, we even joined in progress. <laughs> After an update, here's Cunningham. Flag on the play. I think the week in and week out, Richie Pettibone, the assistant head coach of the of the Washington Redskins, again the guy in charge of the defense. I think he does a better job than anyone ever Holy has in this number league. 79 on the offense. 10 yards, still first down. You know, John, they made much here in Washington and around the NFL of the fact that the Redskins were coming into this game with a short week to prepare for the Eagles, a big game for them. The fact that they played on Monday night. We talked to Richie about it yesterday, and he said, hey, I like the short week. Yeah. Doesn't give you as much time to think. But, I mean, I think his teams are always better prepared than anyone else's because he, he'll always have a great defense, but he doesn't always have the best player. This is Byers. Now they, they want him back in there. Of course, he has that Charlie horse, and they he comes in and just plays like heck. Then they go out and they work on that Charlie horse for a while. Then they bring him back in. <laughs> you know, that's what you know, the thing. I mean, everyone is empty in their tank today. I mean, yep. just whatever they have, they're giving it to win this game. Otho Davis. He has his work cut out for him. Empty in his tank. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, Bill Davis makes the best chili in the league, too. It does. <laughs> Wonder if that's good for Charlie Horse. He doesn't wash his hands when he makes it. That, that's what gives you the flavor. You know, all that stuff. He just he just takes those same hands, and just makes that chili. Say it has some interesting spices in it. 16 to 5 the score. Two and a half minutes left to play. First down, Philadelphia. And he's trying to get Byers in there for another couple of plays here. No timeouts left. Cunningham sacked by Jason Buck. Ooh. That's the thing that the that the Redskins talked about all week is that they wanted to contain Cunningham. You're not going to stop him. You're not going to control him. But you have to keep someone outside him, not let him get to the outside, and then push him from the middle. Cunningham again flushed out. And chased and going deep. He's got a hand open. There's Jeff Snyder. At 5-6 or 6-6, six, six. he couldn't have gotten that one. Yeah, he needed a little more length on those legs. You look at the pressure that the that the Redskins have put on Randall Cunningham. They've sacked him five times, but they've hurried him 12 times. You know, where they made him throw when he wasn't ready, knocked him down four times, had two batted balls and one interception. And the crowd starts that chant: Randall, Randall, third and 16. Players say they don't hear it, but they do. Cunningham. Lost. You can see that coming. Calvin Williams made the catch. They hit from A.J. Johnson. And that was the thing that Richie Pettibone was worrying about A.J. Johnson. He said he knew that he could cover. He didn't know if he could tackle. Hit like that, you don't have to worry about it. 16 to 5. Two minutes left to play. Two minutes left. The Redskins 16, the Eagles 5. The Eagles, no timeouts left, and uh, away go the yard line markers. Where do these guys have to go? <laughs> I don't know. They have a flight, maybe. That's Walker. Herschel. They finally got him hurt. 
it out of bounds or close to it. Well, I think the big thing is the Redskins didn't want him to get out of bounds. He didn't get out of bounds. Did not. Herschel was trying to get out of bounds. Remember, the Eagles have no timeouts left. Second down. About a yard, maybe two. Walker. I think the Eagles have to be thinking in time of, of in terms of two touchdowns and they can't be running the ball like that. They got to be taking shots at the end zone from here. First down. Eagles. Cunningham out of the shotgun and he comes out. And did he get out? Yes he did. Yeah, that's the two things that they have to think about. If they're going to run or not get in the end zone, they have to get out of bounds because, again, they're thinking of a score, an onside kick, and another score. I would think they got to get the ball in the end zone here. I mean, they got to direct the ball to the end zone. Quick. Yeah, throw passes in the end zone. Less than a minute. Second and two. Cunningham. And they can't do that. Barnett. That doesn't help much, does it? No, no, no. In, in, in fact, an incomplete pass, that was first down. An incomplete pass would have been better than that. Right. That was a poor play. They just burned up about 20 seconds. Now they burned up two plays. See, that is really poor time management there because, because the one before, I think you got to throw the ball in the end zone. And then stopping the clock there, that second play isn't going to hurt him. But if you're going to throw it, the pattern, the guy that you're throwing it to has to be in the end zone. And the chant of Randall Randall continues. Rich Kotite, all-time leading receiver at Wagner College from Staten Island. Intended for Byers, Andre Collins broke it up. 36 seconds left. Here at RFK Stadium, the score is the Redskins 16, the Eagles 5. Third and goal from the six. Cunningham to throw it. Middle incomplete. Jeff Snyder. The intended receiver. Well, the Eagles are doing now what they have to do. They're throwing the ball in the end zone, and now they only have one more play to do it. And again, they either have to get a touchdown on this next play, and then again, the onside kick, and to get the ball, and then go for another score. It's the only chance. 32 seconds left. This has got to be in the end zone, like you said. Touchdown to Calvin Williams. Okay, now they have some excitement, see, because now that gives them 11. They can win with a touchdown. You go back to that, taking that safety, and you wonder, and I'll guarantee you, there's only 25 seconds, but Joe Gibbs is a little tight right now because you're going to get the extra point. Then you're going to get an onside kick, and that can be an exciting play. Ruzek to attempt the extra point. 25 seconds, no timeouts left for the Eagles. Okay, now this is a very important uh, uh, play here for both teams. Now. What the, the kicking team is going to do is they want speed on there. They're going to kick something where you hope the ball can flop over and then get up in the air. And the Eagles are going to have their, their onside kick kicking team. The Redskins are going to have their hands guys. You see all these guys here, defensive backs, wide receivers, linebackers. They're all going to be, you're going to have 10 guys up and just one deep. And you're taking every gap so that when the guy kicks the ball that you can catch it and you have your best guys your best hands guys up there. Donnie Warren's in there. 
See Desmond Howard's in there. Art Monk is coming in now. Gary Clark behind Monk. Wilbur Marshall. One time I was coaching and I hadn't worked on that. I'll tell you, and I promised myself if I get through this one, I'll never not work on onside prevent again in my life. And I worked on it the rest of my coaching life. Monty Coleman's in there, the old 14 year veteran, knows how to handle everything. Eagles has to make something happen with the ball. You got to put something on the ball, and it starts with the way you tee it up. You see the way they did? They didn't even put it on the tee. They put it in front of the tee. So that's going to make a flip end over end. Like a mold than it worked <laughs> at RFK. I don't know which way it's going now. It's going to be Eagles and the Redskins had it and lost it. And a scramble. Officials down close to the bottom of the pile. The Redskins do get it. And when you see the head coach take off the headset, you know that today belongs to the other people. And you know that the hands team work. Do the ball now. The, the Redskins can come out before 10 yards. The Eagles, the kicking team, can't catch it before it goes 10 yards. Now the hands team at first it didn't work. Then the hands team right there, Wilbur Marshall again making a heck of a play. Wilbur Marshall. Hey, he's had a good week because this is the second game he played this week. You remember Monday night yep. and then Sunday, and he has had a heck of a week. The Eagles have no timeouts, so all the Redskins have to do is say we'll see you later. Marshall recovered that fumble. Richie Pettibone overlooking at him. Joe Gibbs shaking hands with Rich Kotite. Marshall's left hand with Kobe and Dolick. So for John Madden, this is Pat Summerall.